A couple of days ago, someone asked me if I knew of a way to automate a bunch of repetitive configuration work that they needed to perform across a bunch of different network infrastructure platforms. And I said, sure, Ansible. Ansible is an automation engine which is purpose-built to do just that. You point Ansible at a bunch of different hosts, you give Ansible a playbook full of tasks that you want it to execute on each of those hosts, and by writing that playbook full of tasks one time and giving it to Ansible, you're saved the time and effort of manually reaching out and configuring each one of those devices one by one. This video is going to be a crash course on how to get Ansible up and running, and as an example, how to write a playbook that will execute commands against a couple of Cisco switches and a Cisco firewall, and then a second playbook that will back all those commands out. So let's get started. First thing to do then is download Ansible. So if you go to ansible.com, this is a Red Hat website. Pretty much every link you click on this ansible.com website is gonna lead you to something to buy. If you're not comfortable with or just don't wanna be bothered with doing a lot of command line, Linux shell type of work, editing text files, Ansible Tower will put a, a graphical front end over all the top of this. So you can kind of point and click your way through your Ansible adventures. Uh, and there's some other nice bells and whistles that come with that product too. But again, this, this is a commercial, you know, you buy this. Where really, for this video, all I'm interested in doing is getting good old free open source Ansible. Easiest way to do that then is just Google for download Ansible. The first link under the ad here, installing Ansible-Ansible documentation. It's actually gonna take us back to ansible.com. Uh, but here in their documentation center, there's this install guide, which has instructions for getting Ansible up and running on various platforms. I use Ubuntu Linux here. The Ubuntu instructions were all of four commands to run. So basically you'll just watch it fetch this and that from remote repositories, do a build and presto Ansible is installed on the machine. So the next thing to do when setting up Ansible is to actually give Ansible the modules that will tell it how to interact with the devices that you're gonna be pointing it at. So in this case, I've got a couple of Cisco Catalyst switches running iOS and a Cisco firewall running the ASA operating system. So I need to download and install the module that will tell Ansible how to work with Cisco iOS and Cisco ASA operating systems. And the way you do that is, I might have them in my history here, I do. These commands here. So this Ansible Galaxy command is kind of, uh, you know, go to the Ansible shop, so to speak, or the Ansible store and do an install on this cisco.ios module. This module here is just telling Ansible how to interact with an iOS device, and then you can do the same thing for your other devices, like you know, I can run it for my ASA, and you can look these up. The remaining bit of setup is basically just priming the connections to the target devices, and when I say prime, so you've probably seen this, you SSH to a host, if it's the first time, it'll say, hey, this host is sending back this key, do you wanna add it to your keychain or whatever? And you just say yes and get on with it. Uh, well, Ansible can't say yes. Uh, all Ansible can do is wait and then bomb out. So you want to avoid that. And the way to avoid that is either manually you go through and you know connect at least once to all your target machines as whatever user is going to be running Ansible. Or if they're your machines, you can export those keys and just import them directly onto this box and be done with it. So one way or another, deal with the SSH issue so that it doesn't cause problems. So at this point, I need to create the two files that are going to tell Ansible which host to interact with and what tasks to execute on each of those hosts. To work with those configuration files, I would suggest, and this is entirely optional, but I would suggest you get your hands on Visual Studio Code. The reason I recommend it is the playbook files that you use with Ansible are written in this YAML file format. YAML is extremely particular about things being properly spaced. Uh, like you can see, just backspacing that one character, you know, the red squiggly line started to show up here. And if you were to feed this to Ansible, as it is right now with this, you know, failed indent, Ansible would just puke red all over the screen with some, you know, incoherent error message that you'd be puzzled over for, you know, God knows how long trying to figure out what's up, when really that's all it was. So when you use something like Visual Studio Code, you can go here to extensions, you can load up some language specific extensions so that the environment understands what a properly formatted YAML file looks like uh, and help you with some of those errors. So just uh, in Visual Studio Code at least, go to extensions here, type in YAML. The first one that comes up is Red Hat's YAML language support extension. I've already got it installed, but you would just click on install. Like I said, it makes the Visual Studio Code environment aware of what YAML should look like. It will prompt you if you've done something dumb, right? There's the red squigglies again. 
uh, and basically just help you avoid a lot of problems uh, when you're using this with Ansible. Let's start with the host file. Try to keep it uh, you know, tidy and well-structured. Well, I kind of take a, a top-down approach, I guess, or, or you know, more general to more specific. So I've got a categories of firewalls, a category of switches, and then within each of these subcategories. So I've got my ASA subcategory under switches. I've got iOS, which I have two, and then Nexus, which I don't have any. But again, just as an example of how you can build these out. Then for each of these, the ultimate, you know, the most detailed level is the host themselves. So here are my iOS devices, the IP addresses, uh, a name, which is really just cosmetic, and then a username that Ansible should log into these with. The other thing here then are these variables, and these are again tied to the categories of devices. So this set of variables is going to apply to devices in the ASA group, telling Ansible to talk to the stuff using that Cisco ASA module we downloaded earlier. You can set a default user and then override it on a host by host basis down here. Become and become method. I imagine you're familiar with it already if you're watching this video, but just in case someone's not, with most network infrastructure, when you log in, uh, you kind of have read-only access. To change anything, you have to enter another command and then a second password, and then you'll have like administrative rights or read-write access to the box. On Cisco gear, that's done via the enable command. So that's all these two lines are setting up, telling it, yeah, you're gonna have to get into a privileged mode to change anything, and here's how to do it. More variables for iOS, but the same sort of thing. In, in iOS, just use the iOS module to get downloaded. The rest of this is the same. Under ASA, this oddball line here, this might actually save someone some Googling someday. My ASA is running slightly older code, so pretty much everything that I use to SSH to it is refusing to connect to it at all. And it's because of this outdated key exchange algorithm. When Ansible is launching an SSH section, it's just the same as you typing the command at the command prompt. This would just be a flag that you could manually enter to the end of your SSH command and tell it, just deal with the, uh, the key exchange algorithm you don't like. Just deal with it, accept the connection, and go. So that's it. Host files, pretty straightforward, just categories of various hosts and uh, information on how to connect to them. And basically Ansible iterates through all of these hosts and feeds them into the playbook. And then the playbook is going to do various things against each of those hosts per the instructions we write here. The playbook itself, the structure is pretty straightforward. Give it a name, right? So this is the name of the playbook. The connection to use when connecting to the devices that are gonna be fed through the playbook. Okay, so in this case, it's all basic network infrastructure with a CLI interface or command line interface. So you can go to Ansible and look up what the other connection types are if you want to point this at servers or even other network monitoring programs. You know, there's all sorts of options. Gather facts, I have it set to false because I don't need it right here, but if you set this to true, it'll fetch like the full running config of the target device and allow you to access that information in that config in your playbook. Hosts all just means all the hosts in the host.ini file should be cycled through this playbook. The next bit here, Varus prompt, this is a little interactive you know, question and answer session that kicks off the playbook. So you'll see when I run this, it's gonna start asking me to enter information. And then for each of these, you know, enter the primary SNMP host address. When I type in my answer, that's gonna get stored in this variable, primary SNMP host. And then further down in the script, I actually put the variable to use in different configuration lines. The other thing to be aware, be very aware of actually here is this option private. Uh, and if you don't specify it as no, by default it is just a yes. And what private yes means is that as I type in my answer to the question, I'm not going to be able to see on the screen what I'm typing in. It won't be echoed back to me. Now understand that the only difference between you entering commands into a device and having Ansible enter commands into a device is that if you mess up, you're probably just gonna mess up that one device. If you feed a playbook full of garbage to Ansible, Ansible can cause a lot of problems across a large number of devices and do so pretty quickly. So there's no additional safety net, there's no extra input validation or any of that that comes with using Ansible. It's just the same as you entering commands into a router or a switch with all the same possible consequences. So you are strongly advised to lab test your playbook and all the commands in your playbook uh, before unleashing your Ansible configuration on a production environment. Now we get down to the tasks portion of the playbook. This is obviously where the action happens. These are just like mini little command modules. So I've defined one here. I give it a descriptive name, even though this is really just cosmetic. When I run this, these are gonna kind of scroll across the screen. So I do want them to be relevant and meaningful in case something goes wrong. It'll, it'll narrow down what section of the playbook I was in when it went sideways. This line tells it how to do it. And again, this is where that module we downloaded earlier, cisco.ios, 
comes into play. And within that module, there's a sub-module called iOS config, and that's what's going to enable its ability to actually configure that device via the lines of configuration that we're going to push to the device uh, from Ansible. And then finally, this is kind of all upside down. So all of this is actually dependent on this conditional, this when. So only do all of this when whatever device you're looking at is a member of the iOS group, right? So it's gonna be one of these two devices. Only do it if it's a member of the iOS group and there actually is uh, primary SNMP and secondary SNMP host information available. So did I actually enter an answer to these questions? Uh, it doesn't have to be a correct answer, but did I enter something? And whatever I did enter then, assuming I did and I'm an iOS device, that's gonna get substituted in here into the lines of that access list. Same deal down here then, this time just use that ASA module, right? Because we're working with an ASA. And again, what group is it, right? I only want this to be run on members of that ASA group. And if there's dependencies on information or input being available, check to make sure that was actually provided. That's really about it. Now I did write a revert script just so I didn't have to manually back out the, uh, all these commands that I'm dumping in in this video. Uh, so this is the same sort of thing, gathering what information is required to back it out. And then in Cisco land to back out a command, you basically just prepend it with no. Do keep in mind that just because you entered the commands in the order of one, two, three, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able, able to, excuse me, be able to back them out the same way. If there's dependencies on one line, you know, between one line and another order sometimes does matter. There was one in here. I think one of these SNMP commands, I think, had to be backed out in a different order than it was put in because of some dependency, I think, between these two lines. So the last thing to say about playbooks, and I touched on this before, is make sure that you're confident that your playbook is going to do exactly what you expect it to do before you use it in a production environment. So test your playbook out in a lab repeatedly until you have a good deal of confidence that everything you have in the playbook is going to behave the way you expect it to. So to actually you know, use Ansible now, we just need to execute that playbook. So syntax is pretty straightforward. It's ansible-playbook and the name of the playbook, I already downloaded onto the Ubuntu box, these three files up here in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so onboarding script then is the playbook that I want Ansible to use. Dash I is the flag to input the list of hosts that should be run through that playbook. And then you need two more flags on your command line here, a little k and a capital K. The small one is gonna prompt me to provide the initial login passwords on a switch, for example, right? So when that, when that Ansible POC user logs into my switch, it's going to need to provide a password just the same as I would. So I'm gonna use the ansible.poc users login password. And then the dash capital K is the enable password. Uh, so again, when the ansible.poc user jumps privilege so that it can actually make changes to the device configuration, it's gonna be prompted for a, another password. That's what the capital K is going to be used for. So when we execute this, it's gonna ask for those right off the bat. So this would be the login password for that ansible.poc account. And then again, this will be the enable or the become in Ansible syntax, the become password. This is the Cisco enable password. So let me punch that in for the Ansible POC user. All right, so now we're in the playbook. This is the first question it's asking me per the little mini script up here. Enter the primary SNMP host. And again, it's gonna take my input and stick it into this variable for use down here in the playbook. All right, primary IP address, I'm gonna keep these easy so I can remember for the revert script how to get rid of them and just put some garbage in here because it doesn't really matter. So now it's executing the playbook based on the information I provided. And this is the onboarding script, right? There's that name. First task here is the iOS SNMP config, that's this here. And for each of these, you can see, okay, I told it only run the iOS SNMP config on iOS devices. So the two switches here are in yellow uh, because it's making changes to them. The ASA is in blue because it skipped, as it said, it skipped the ASA when executing an iOS test. So everything's working as I expected. The ASA portions of the playbook, it's skipping the iOS devices and just applying those to the ASA. Uh, so you get the playbook recap, recap rather at the end. Well, lots of green, green is always good. How many changes it made to each of these target devices and how many times that target device was skipped. No unreachables, no failed, no red. Red is never good. We got all green here, so that's good stuff. So I can go now and to back these changes out, I can run my other playbook, my revert playbook. 
and it's going to do the same thing. Same output, skipping things, it's applying changes to things. Uh, if something were to go wrong, you would see some red on here. But this is it. So I will put these files up somewhere and throw a download link below the video. If you want to use them as a template for getting your own, you know, install off the ground and up and running, great. Happy to help. And that's the video. So thanks for watching and keep an eye on the channel. I hope to do more stuff like this in the future. Thanks.